There was a wall. It did not look important. It was built of uncut rocks roughly mortared. An adult could, could look right over it, and even a child could climb it. Like all walls, it was ambiguous, to faced What was inside it and what was outside it depended upon which side of it, of it you were on. How big are the eyes of a child? Migration is a slippery phenomenon for statisticians. It's very difficult to measure population, and it's harder to count how many people leave the country than those who arrive in it. In 2015, there were about 21 million immigrants living in the European Union from non-member countries. And I'm one of about 900,000 Ukrainians who live in the EU. Ukraine is the Europe's doorstep, and it stands by the door of the European Union. Ukrainians want the EU, and the best part of them who resides abroad the country resides that in Poland, Italy, Germany, Spain, and Czech Republic. Ukrainians want it so much that a lot of them leave every day their passports to human traffickers. And I'm not talking about the 1 million and 600,000 IDPs, internally displaced persons, that are living today as refugees in their country because of the Donbass crisis. Every one of you has a passport, probably lost in a drawer or somewhere at home, a little booklet with different colored hardcover and a sort of emblem of your country. Joking, but not so much as he does, Brecht writes that a man could born by chance, but not a passport. It's the noblest part with, uh, of us. And nowadays, we have no value as persons without. It's funny, but when we are little children, instructions advise us to not play with plastic bags to keep us safe. Instead, when we are grown up, instructions advise us to not play with our passport to keep it safe. Passports, Identity cards, social security numbers are very important for our bureaucracy. A document contains a lot of useful information about us, for example, our name, the date and place of birth, sex, gender, and the place where we live. And a lot of other information that some nations require or have required in the past, for example, the name of our parents, our job, and even our religion. And finally, a document must have a number that is our number. For example, according to my passport, my number is PA093789. OK, but I can't understand where I am. Better, in my passport, there is no useful information about me as a person. Document lists of my whole identity, that is to say my whole story. In my passport, I'm a combination of details that put together do not make sense if you really want to know me. Akia Partiena. This is the admission test in Sperone, the place where I live in the south of Italy, near Naples, near the sea, near the mountains, and, and away from everything. If you ever come to Sperone, somebody, probably an old woman to who you're asking for direction, could ask you, Akia Partiena. What does it mean? I've been living there for 13 years, and I still don't know exactly what it means. A chi appartiene is something like, whom do you belong to? And also, who are your parents? Who are you are related to? What is your neighborhood? Where do you live? And better, whom can I ask to about you? A number of personal and complicated questions, don't you think? This old lady, is not a border patrol agent with hats, a gun, and a button. She has got only some wrinkles around the eyes, a lovely voice, and a walking stick. Imagine you are in Sperone, it's a sunny day, a view, uh, you are in the, view, in the road passing through field houses and a little church, and a smiling face is asking you about your whole story. So, have you got your passport with you? Have you checked it? Okay, chuck it away and try to answer. 
this nice old lady, probably my face remembers her when uh, I was a child just to write in Italy from Ukraine, all nice old ladies of Sperone stopped my mother in order to pinch my cheeks in a welcoming sign. They pinched so hard that my cheeks became red, burning in their very big and callous hands. As soon as they got near me, I used to close my eyes, but I didn't pull away my face because it was a sort of ritual initiation. Do you really want to be one of us, little Polish child? In Sperone, there are four times Ukrainians more than Poles, but all white immigrants are Poles, you know. So, do you really want to be one of that appartains to Sperone? Okay, give us your special Ukrainian, Polish, whatever cheeks, and our strong fingers will transform them into original and Speronian ones. They stopped pulling my cheeks when I turned 10. They had been pinching my cheeks for six long years. And only when they noticed that my cheeks weren't actually so different from Italian ones, the Latin in main piece. No matter a chi appartiene, no question for me. They knew that I was the daughter of Nadia and Alexander. There are from 8 to 20 million people of Ukrainian origin living abroad in the world. The number is quite shaky, just because there are some doubts about how to consider people, for example, like my brothers, and all the members of second and third generations. Eight or 20 millions were too many. In Italy, there are about 240 foreigners of Ukrainian origin, the fifth largest foreign-born community in the country. Too many or not, I can say it. In Spirone, we are 34, and five of them are members of my family of an amount of about 100 foreigners, where too few of us. In my school, I'm the only student that was not born in Italy. I'm alone. Too many or too few, we will never be the right number. Somebody thinks that we are a part of barbarian horde, someone else that we are heroes, I really can't decide, probably I am a barbarian hero, but I know the stories and everyday life of some of them. For example, every morning, Yulia walks down three kilometers on foot, walking with her three children to school. That's why she's always late at work. Every evening, Olga uh, gets bored, so she never tires of calling her son in Ukraine, and when she doesn't answer, she gets angry, calls friends and gossips. Every Sunday, Galia goes to church. But it's so, so stickler with her daughter-in-law that probably the poor girl will leave Galia's sons as his former wife that has escaped from her like a hare. So everyday life of everyday people, so where are the heroes? Where are the barbarian hordes that are invading Europe? On a little bike like Natalia riding every day the most unsafe state route near Naples in a sort of life challenge with Furious Car. Or the next conqueror will be Tanya, that Victor cries and hopes every night will arrive here in Italy for sanitary treatment. Okay, I'm Anastasia, better Anastasia Oleksandrivna and I moved to Italy from Ukraine when I was four. And I'm not a number, and I don't feel intruding with Yulia, Olga, Galia, Natalia, Victor and Tanya. We are not too many. I've grown up feeling neither Ukrainian nor Italian, a stranger to myself and a foreigner in this and my own country. Before I decided to spread myself out on my own horizon for this contest, for the first contest for the TEDx youth, I prepared uh, a speech about a cow. Yes, about a cow, a big, fat, calm and quiet cow. It was not a dog. It was a holy symbol of my childhood. In this speech, I did say that I like expressing myself when I draw, even though I never shown my drawings to anyone. But I didn't say the most important thing. My mother, when I met her for the first time at the age of four, was the one who showed me how to do a cow. 
So Cal was the first link with my mother, and I have been afraid of losing it for a very long time. So I had always my drawings kept away from anyone. Somewhere in my past, I also taken all my memories and I've hidden there far away in my mind, so I no, longer I no longer understood who I was. But some day before the video contest, I found a folder when I had closed all my sketches, and keeping in hand one of these crumbled sheets, I simply realized that all my dreams and expectations had been closed in a folder for years. I have to say that my first speech was so straight and quite contradictory, so I had to prepare another one. I was plenty of thoughts without words. So I finally went to my mom. I sat in front of her and I asked, please, mama, tell me my story. And she said, do you really want our story? I nodded and in strong and calm words, she gave me the reason why she and dad left Ukraine searching a different life in a foreign country. She also said that leaving Ukraine and me when I was just one year old, they wanted to earn enough money to buy a washer, a hair dryer and a refrigerator, I come back home. Both are very young, 22 years old, falling in love with the strength of my daddy and the kindness of my mom. As uh, they soon realized that Sperone was the right and maybe the best place where I live as persons and not only as workers. In my time, I have remained with my grandparents in Vinita. My mother told me also how, after three very long years, my daddy picked up me and took me home in the early afternoon of my childhood. A little baby looking towards to see her mom in every brown eyes with hope, fear, and a lot of childish anger. Until then, I thought that she had abandoned me, refused for a new life without me. But talking now, frankly and touched, my mother picked up me and took me home again, to my real home myself. I cried a lot preparing the second speech, all these years, I misunderstood my mom. I thought that she was a treacherous, while she was a niece, a heroine that has lit up my whole life. So I'm here today telling you about my true story, a story about a daughter of a couple of heroes, and I speak English in order to be understandable to everyone here in Italy and then in Ukraine, speaking about the price of silence, and the power of words. How big are the eyes of a child searching for her mother? How long are the hours of a mother without her daughter? How many children, how many big guys are searching the way to reach the hours of their mothers? I've been lucky, very lucky. Elan Kurdi from Kobane was only three when he had closed for the last time his big brown eyes looking for his mother in some miles of Mediterranean Sea, drowned between Tark and Greece. I did my 20 hours bus ride from Veneta to Sperone, while he did, didn't reach the European dream. His father is, he's, is crying, his no more smiles, no more dreams, no more, no more, no more words. My mother taught me how to draw a cow, and that had been the best moment of my childhood. Since then, I kept my eyes wide open. And now I understand that migration is not a moment, but a process. Migrants want to be heard than to earn. We all, as human beings, need problematic and personal questions. We need more old ladies and than border patrol agents, more stories and less passports. Big eyes closed by pinching gratings, no more eyes closed by tears, shot and sand. Thank you for your attention.